Hello, and welcome to an orientation of the Health Risk Screening Tool. My name is Jonathan Crumley, Senior Director of Operations for Health Risk Screening. The objective of this video is to provide you with a basic understanding of the Health Risk Screening Tool, also known as the HRST. We cannot deny that the quality of life we experience is directly related to the quality of health we experience. Many individuals with disabilities experience a lower quality of life because health issues are either innocently ignored, unappreciated, or simply undetected. Often, if the person does not communicate using words, behaviors may be used in an attempt to communicate a health issue such as pain or discomfort. When this occurs, there is a tendency to treat the behavior instead of the real issue, which is also referred to as root cause. The HRST is a screening tool used to assist in the early identification of health risk and signs of destabilization. The HRST seeks to capitalize on the family and staff's knowledge of the person while compensating for their lack of clinical training or appreciation for health issues related to those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. This is done with the goal of helping others identify and appreciate health risks that can pose a direct threat to the person's life and their quality of life. We must always remember that early detection and action saves lives. So, what is the HRST? The HRST is a web-based instrument developed to screen for health risk and early signs of health destabilization. It is largely used with the following individuals, those with intellectual and developmental disabilities, various physical disabilities, traumatic brain injury, the geriatric population, children, or any other vulnerable population. The main purpose of the tool is to detect risk and signs of destabilization early so that preventative action can be taken to improve quality of life as well as avert preventable, unnecessary deaths. The HRST, originally known as the Physical Status Review, was developed in 1992 in the state of Oklahoma by Karen Green McGowan, a registered nurse who now has over 50 years of direct experience with both adults and children with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Its purpose was to ensure that those transitioning in that state from a large institutional setting to the community would not suffer from undetected health risk and destabilization. The goal was to empower community support staff and families who are often non-clinical with the ability to detect early warning signs of various health risks. The tool sought to capitalize on the relationship these supporters have with the person yet compensate for their lack of clinical expertise as it relates to those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The HRST was extensively field tested, deemed reliable, and taken from a paper version to a web-based version currently in use today. The HRST is designed with simplicity in mind. It consists of 22 rating items and a rating scale aimed at finding out where the individual is experiencing health risk and destabilization. Once a score has been assigned to each of the 22 rating items, the tool then produces action steps for the team to consider to mitigate or eliminate the risk and destabilization that has been detected. Here are the 22 rating items found in the HRST. They are divided into five categories, functional, behavior, physiological, safety, and frequency of services. Each of the 22 rating items are deliberately chosen to make up the HRST. These are areas where health risk and destabilization are likely to occur in vulnerable populations. The HRST rating key assigns a score that reflects the level of health risk or destabilization that has been detected in each of the rating items. Scores can range from zero to four. The higher the score, the higher the risk. Let's take a look at how trained HRST raters arrive at a score using the HRST. Each individual rating item is assigned a score as indicated here. Note that each of the 22 rating items have a numeric score assigned to them. In this example, we are scoring item A, eating. To arrive at a score, a trained rater answers a series of yes or no questions about the item in relation to the person. As these questions are answered, the application will rule out the scores that do not apply based on the yes or no answers. When all questions have been answered, a final score for that item is assigned. Each of the 22 rating items will be scored in a similar manner. This will continue 
until a final score is ultimately determined for each item and an overall healthcare level is assigned. The HRST healthcare level is very important. It plots the person on a spectrum of risk that can range from a level 1 to a level 6. As you can see, levels 1 and 2 are low risk. Levels 3 and 4 are moderate risk. Levels 5 and 6 are high risk. Increasing healthcare levels of any degree should always be of concern and promote immediate action. As you will see later, these healthcare levels can tell us a lot about lifespan and mortality. So far, I have provided you with some basic introductory information about the HRST and how a score is determined. Although an accurate score is important, it is actions others take based on that score that has the most impact on the person. For the HRST to improve the quality of life or save a life, someone must act on the risk that has been identified. Let's take another look at how the HRST promotes action. Often those with intellectual and developmental disabilities are surrounded by volumes of information and data, both in electronic systems and paper documents. The amount of information can be overwhelming and chaotic. The problem is typically not a lack of information, but rather, how do we filter through it to determine what is important to that person's health and safety? And where should our attention be placed? As the trained HRST rater answers the yes or no questions about each of the 22 rating items in relation to the person, the HRST begins to align and organize all of that information. The information is aligned into categories we spoke about earlier. functional behavior, and physiological. Other categories include safety and frequency of services. The HRST then assigns a score which tells the team where attention should be placed. The higher the score, the more risk or destabilization has been detected. At this point, the HRST has taken information that may have once been overwhelming and confusing and assigned a weighted score, allowing attention to be placed specifically on the items that pose the greatest risk to the person. Scores tell you where risk has been found and to what degree, but we still need to know how to respond to these risks. It is for this reason the HRST produces both the service and training considerations, which tell you what actions to take regarding the risk that has been identified. The service considerations are very important. These are the HRST's way of saying, in light of where risk has been found in relation to the person, these are other professionals, specialists, assessments, or evaluations that may be needed to avert, mitigate, or eliminate these risks. The training considerations are equally important. This is the HRST's way of saying, in light of where risk has been found, these are the areas where those that directly support the person should be specifically trained. This can include staff and family members alike. The risk level of the person, as identified by the HRST, should be very well known and appreciated by everyone who supports the person. The HRST provides the case manager with important details so they can be a better overseer of health and safety while completing visits with the person, as well as more empowered advocates. For the nurse, the HRST provides clinical details that help ensure the person is receiving the right amount of clinical services in areas that matter most. It also provides a way for nurses to train other non-clinical supporters on the specifics related to the person's health risk. The HRST provides direct care staff and families who are often providing the most intimate, frequent care, the appreciation and awareness of how to support the person based off where risk are present. The HRST also provides staff and families with information to have more meaningful conversations with community doctors and clinicians. The appreciation of these risks, how to address them, and preventative measures should unify the communication between these supporters. This ensures that everyone is aware of these risks and how to manage them adequately. This encourages unified action. The HRST seeks to provide the team and family with the opportunity to observe where risk and destabilization is or may occur, decide how to respond, and take action. So, as we have seen, identifying health risk and signs of health destabilization early is vitally important. Taking action is also critical. 
How do we know this? As we talked about earlier, once each of the 22 rating items have been scored, the HRST will assign an overall healthcare level. The HRST healthcare level has been proven to be a reliable indicator and predictor of life expectancy. Consider this one graph taken from an independent study of the HRST with regards to average life expectancy. Note the six-point healthcare level at the bottom. With every one-point increase in the HRST healthcare level, the person's life expectancy decreases. It takes a significant drop between healthcare levels three and four. This further emphasizes the importance of acting early to prevent a rise in healthcare levels. Here are some final thoughts regarding best practices. The HRST should be updated at least annually. Think of this as an annual checkup. Screening a person can take anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes, depending on the complexity of the individual's health issues. The HRST should be updated anytime there is a change that could affect any of the 22 rating items, such as ER visits, hospitalizations, injuries, falls, etc. Updates only take a few minutes. Only a trained HRST rater can complete or update an HRST. Information to complete an HRST screening can come from many places, such as medical records, family, support staff, friends, medical history, or the person. The person is encouraged to be a part of the screening process, but it is not required. The support team should use the HRST service and training considerations to take action on identified risk. It is important to take a copy of the HRST with the person to any medical appointments. Community clinicians can use the HRST to get a better appreciation of the person and where risks are present. Preventing preventable deaths is possible. Improving quality of life by taking action on health risk is possible. The key is early identification. Observe, decide, act. Thank you for taking the time to view this orientation to the HRST, and thank you for all that you do to support those with intellectual and developmental disabilities.